citation associated with lower risk of nursing home admission and anoxic brain damage in out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survivors. Yes. Can you all hear me? Sure. Oh, good. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to speak at this press conference. My name is Christian Krakholm, and I come from the University Hospital of Denmark, University Hospital in Aalborg in Denmark. And it's a great privilege for me to present to you today the main findings of this study on outcomes of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survivors. These are my disclosures. And here I present to you the main findings of our study. We found higher proportions of survivors alive one year out of hospital cardiac arrest without brain damage or nursing home admission if bystanders perform CPR. On the y-axis, you see proportion of survivors in percentage, and on the x-axis, you see the three different survivor groups. The red group refers to the survivor group who did not receive bystander CPR, but received help when the emergency medical service personnel arrived. You see that approximately 70% were alive one year out of hospital cardiac arrest without nursing home admission or brain damage. This increased to approximately 80% if survivors received bystander CPR, and it increased even further if bystanders on top of performing CPR also defibrillated the patient. So these groups were the green group and the blue group. So to recapitulate, to recap oh, sorry, to summarize, um, three out of 10 survivors were in a nursing home or had anoxic brain damage if bystanders did not initiate CPR. If bystanders initiated CPR, two out of 10 were in a nursing home or had anoxic brain damage, and only one out of 10 if bystanders on top of performing CPR also defibrillated the patient. The reason why we did this study was that there has been a major increase in survival in many countries in recent years, including Denmark. This figure shows the trends in survival in Denmark during the past decade. On the y-axis, you see survival in percentage from 0 to 35%, and on the x-axis, you see calendar year from 2001 to 2010. And notably, there was a more than a doubling in the survival rate. However, Limited is known about the long-term function of survivors. And it's a notion that many survivors fare poorly, and that's why we performed this study. And so, again, here are the main findings. In addition to increased survival, the majority of 30-day survivors were alive one year after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, and they did not have brain damage or nursing home admission. On the y-axis, you see proportion of survivors in percentage, and on the x-axis, you see three different age groupings. The youngest age group, that is the first column, approximately 85% were alive one year after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest without brain damage or nursing home admission. The middle age group, uh, age of 65 to 79 years of age, approximately 80% were still alive without brain damage or nursing home admission. And the last group, the survivors of 80 or more years of age, still two-thirds of these elderly survivors were still alive one year after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and did not have brain damage or nursing home admission. This slide is a little bit busy. I'll try to guide you through it. It depicts the statistical output of our modeling. Uh, on the far ha right-hand side, I've shown a forest plot, and there everything below one is beneficial. That means no brain damage or no nursing home admission. Everything above one is harmful, meaning brain damage or nursing home admission. And notably, and what I marked in boxes, and these were adjusted for age, sex, years, and comorbidity. Bystanders performing CPR relative to bystanders who did not perform CPR, these survivors who received bystander CPR, they had an approximately 
40% lower risk of nursing home admission or brain damage, and it was even lower if bystanders on top of performing CPR also defibrillated the patient, then approximately 50% lower. So conclusions. The majority of survivors of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest were alive one year after out-of-hospital cardiac arrest without brain damage or nursing home admission. And survivors who received help from bystanders had significantly lower risk of brain damage and nursing home admission. So this speaks to the importance of the resuscitative efforts, not only CPR, but also that bystanders take use of these AEDs you see around this Congress and elsewhere in society. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Some questions from the floor? Some comments from the spoke? Uwe? Did you adjust for the fact that the patient had witnessed uh, 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 cardiac arrest? Um, because this, this is a, a major factor. It might be yes. that just the bystander informed uh, the ambulance, and that uh, yes. this is the most important thing, not uh, yes. just start yes. CPR. Um, we, we have performed several analyses, and I have... I, we're not able to show all the analysis, but yes, we also had models where we adjusted for witness status. However, um, we also uh, stratified our analyses according to witness status, and these findings were still seen uh, among witnessed arrests. Um, however, it's, it's a little bit difficult to adjust for witnessed arrests because um, more people are receiving bystander CPR if you're a witness. However, we did do this as a sensitivity analysis, but you have to take caution that you're not also adjusting the effect of bystander CPR when you're adjusting for witness arrest. I think it's an important remark also to state that this study concerns the patients that already survived the out-of-hospital CPR. And it's indicating if these patients can live longer and without the help of others, that's an important statement. So live longer in a good quality of life. That's what this study is about. And a very nice thing in this study, and this is due to the efforts in the Scandinavian countries, but also within the ESC, is the ongoing awareness about the problem that is existing. And by this awareness that people are more investing in this element of out-of-hospital CPR and the nice results are showing that indeed it pays off now in, in your country. Very nice. Thank you for this comment. And if I may add, you're absolutely right. In Denmark, uh, during the past decade where uh, this study was conducted, we studied survivors of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest from the year 2001 to 2012. Approximately 3,000 survivors were found. And during this period, an increasing number of survivors were found, and also on top of increased survival. These initiatives taken, including uh, that bystanders learn CPR mandatory courses in elementary schools when acquiring a driver's license, these uh, initiatives were taken during the study period, and they may be the driving factors for these results shown. However, our study design cannot rule out other initiatives or importance of other factors. But, but it was during these um, years that these outcomes were seen. So yes, thank you for this additional comment. Okay, thank you very much.